As of all, this is Lazy Mode, and welcome to another No Be Yet Before You Buy video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Battlefield 2042 and talking about if you should put your hard earned money and purchase Battlefield, or if you should probably skip it and maybe save your money for another game or just not buy it at all. So, we're going to be covering all that in today's video. We're going to cover all the changes, the modes, and all that good stuff. So, if all of this sounds like something you're definitely interested in, a like would be greatly appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe, turn on all your notifications, because we will be covering some Battlefield 2042 for you guys, but how extensively, that's all dependent on how many likes and how many comments we get on this video. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as you know right here on the channel, guys, we try to give it to you as fast, quick as possible, no BS, but when it comes to these type of videos, we always want to make sure you know what you're paying for and what you're getting. So we're just going to take the price point of $70, and we'll break down exactly what the game comes with and at the end we'll tell you guys if it's good to purchase it or not so let's start off with the first thing and the most controversial thing currently right now in the game and that is the specialist if you played any battlefield games prior to this one you will know that we had classes prior to specialists this time around we're getting introduced to 10 different specialists that are going to be into the game now the good thing and advantage of this is that you no longer are tied to a specific weapon with the specialist Every specialist is able to use any gun, and each specialist has its own ability and own attributes that make him unique. Some are more heal focused, some are more tank focused, some are more, uh, you know, playing aggressive focused, some move faster, some have wingsuits, some have different ways of traversing the map, like with a grapple hook. So there is a ton of diversity when it comes to the specialist. But a lot of you guys who come from playing previous Battlefield games are more in into the classes and that is what everybody's accustomed so a lot of people don't like the specialist class some people do i would say just wait let's try it out see how it plays out and then we could make a judgment of that speaking of that how many of you got a chance to play the beta and please let me know i played the beta in the comment section down below if you liked it or if you disliked it now let's talk about the maps there are a total of seven brand new maps introduced to the game and by far one of the coolest things about these seven new introduced maps is that these new maps are the biggest in all battlefield history so these are big if you've seen big maps if you thought we had big maps in battlefield prior to this these are even bigger which is actually pretty good because there is a lot of you know gunfight a lot of vehicle fight a lot of airplane fight so the bigger the map the more destruction the more stuff you're able to do now in addition to these seven new maps we get seven remastered maps which we'll talk about a little bit how those are going to work and where those will play later on in the video now, one of the things that I always enjoyed about Battlefield games when they used to come out was getting a chance to play the campaign. I thought Battlefield had a really, really good campaign. It was the most cinematic and very enjoyable campaigns that I played when it comes to first-person shooters or third-person shooters is the Battlefield campaign. They were really good. Unfortunately, this time around, guys, there is no campaign. So just off the campaign alone, we're going to have to knock down another 10 hours of playable or playability because there is no campaign in addition to that i always look forward to it but to me personally no campaign is a downside whenever they exclude it out of the game anytime they take content away from the game and they don't give me better content then i am a little bit disappointed and upset that's just my personal point of view but i want to hear what your point of view is as well now does this mean that there will be no storyline in battlefield 2042 the answer to that is there will, but the way they're going to be telling the story is not going to be towards the campaign or from the campaign itself. You're going to be able to read a, a read about the campaign either through the website, also with the trailers and the new seasons that are going to be coming out. They plan on telling the story throughout trailers and throughout the seasons, which is kind of cool, kind of going the, you know, the Apex route, but I still think a campaign would have been solid. Even if it was a short campaign, kind of like the Call of Duty Vanguard one, it still would have been really dope to have a campaign and kind of tie the characters so you could get, you know, get a little bit more acquainted with them because sometimes people just don't want to go to a website and read. Hence the Destiny days when you had to go read the lore. No one went to go read the lore, only like a few people. And that's why there was never like a story behind Destiny. But let's on forward. Now let's talk about the modes you're going to be able to play. Since there is no campaign, we only have multiplayer. So there's a total of three different types of modes that you're able to play in Battlefield. Number one, you're going to be playing all-out warfare this is just a hundred plus players within the battlefield and vehicles tanks uh you know atvs airplanes everything that you could possibly think of they are going to go there and fight it out deck it out so that's your big 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 map big player base uh mode the other mode that we have is portal and that portal mode is actually pretty interesting because what the portal mode does it introduces not only does it introduce the old maps from previous battlefield and bad company maps but 
It also introduces vehicles, and it's pretty much the custom games. I'm pretty sure that that's the reason we didn't have a deck down battle royale because they feel people are going to be able to recreate like a battle royale type scenario with Portal. So they said, you know, there is no reason for us to put a battle royale because, you know, theoretically people create a Portal with a battle royale mode and play it that way. So that is what's up with Portal. Now, in addition to that, they all have the one that everybody's kind of been waiting for and hoping for, which is Hazard Zone. Now, if you already played stuff like the Division where you played the Dark Zone, very similar, guys. Or you played uh, Escape from Tarkov. Very similar. Not so extensive, but it's very similar. Now, I'll have a separate video going over Hazard Zone and what that entails, how to play it, and all that information later on this week. But Hazard Zone is kind of like their main bread and butter mode that they want to do. Now, unfortunately, none of these modes are free to play. All of these modes come with the disc. So you want to keep that in mind if you're thinking Hazard Zone was going to be free to play. That is not going to happen. Now, moving on to the game mechanics. What can we expect out of game mechanics? We're not going to go spend too much time here, but in the game mechanics, there's two new things that got introduced from previous battlefields, and I thought they're worth the mention. Number one is the plus system. The plus system allows you to swap weapons and attachments on the fly, so you no longer have to kind of, you know, pause your menu and do that the way you used to do it before, but now you can actually swap it on the fly, which is really cool. Then we call we have the call-in tablet. Now, the call-in tablet is really awesome because now you're able to call in vehicles. So if you call in a you know ATV, a tank, you're going to be able to do that and summon that with the call-in tablet, which is going to airdrop a vehicle for you, which is really good. In addition to that, moving forward within the game, we're going to have four different type content that are going to be expanded within the months of every three months. So every three months, we can expect a new content, which would give the start of a brand new season. Now, all these contents will come with brand new specialists. So not only do we have the 10 specialists we have it now, but as the game progresses and as the game moves forward each season, we will get introduced to new specialists. Now, how many specialists that is, I have no idea, but you will be getting introduced to these specialists. In addition to that, the game will feature a battle pass, so you're going to be able to earn cosmetics. Speaking of cosmetics, the cosmetics come in different sets of rarity. We have, of course, your common, your rare, your epic, your legendary. So there is going to be a lot of grinding when it comes to the battle pass so you can get these type of items. I wish there was a um, different way to kind of get the uh, items, which would not only battle pass type, but we're going to have to wait and see how that works. Hopefully Hazard Zone has something similar where you're able to spurn that currency to get a cosmetic or something like that. I think that would be pretty cool. The game does come with cross progression and cross purchase, which is like, really good because if you want to play the game on PC, you want to go to your Xbox, you want to make sure you have the items for that specific console, regardless of what happens. Now, when can you actually get your hands on the game and when can you get started to play the game? The game will release on November the 19th. But wait guys, you're going to be given the option to actually play this game early on November the 12th, which is this Friday, if you have an Xbox One Pass or if you have EA Access, which is going to give you access to playing the game about a couple days early. Now with all of this being said, now it's time for us to answer the question, is it worth you purchasing the game? Let's talk about the drawbacks and let's talk about the positives. To me personally, one of the biggest drawbacks is not having a campaign. Number two drawback that it has for me is that I feel like the modes are very limited to the amount of money you're going to be dishing out, which is $70. All right, so let's talk about the drawbacks that we have. Currently right now, I think there are too many little maps for the game. If you kind of come inside and look at Call of Duty Vanguard, there's 22 maps. I mean, even though the maps aren't as big as the ones from Battlefield, that's still 22 maps to seven so that is a big big one uh in addition to that another thing that's a downside for me personally is not having a campaign I think a campaign should never have been removed from Marvel. even though it was short a campaign should have still been there and the other drawback that i have which i feel it's going to hurt the game just a tad bit is not having a free to play mode a free mode would have made this game even more enticing to other people that might have not considered purchasing the game to pick up the game allowing for more people to be in lobbies now, those are my takes on the negative side. On the positive side, I do like the specialist class. I think that's going to be a very good option we have, even though some people don't really like it. I think with the introduction of new specialists coming every season, that's going to be really good. I do like the fact that we're getting a battle pass. I think that's going to put the grind in where you're like, okay, well, maybe I should play the game a little bit more to make sure I complete the battle pass. I do like the fact that they have cross-progression and cross-purchase, and I like the new mechanics that the game has introduced, which is the swap weapon attachments and the call-in tablets. I think those are all pluses in my book. Now, does that equate to $70? For me personally, right now, I think the game is a little bit overpriced. I think maybe one different game mode 
or something maybe a free to play mode would have been amazing or just something a little bit better i think i would even give them a go if they had 10 maps but until right now guys since this is no bs i think it's just a tad bit over now i hope i change my mind whenever i play the game and it's going to be amazing but as of right now, I think you should probably wait for a price reduction or wait for my review, and then we'll go ahead and take it from there. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys plan on picking up Battlefield 2042. If you do, let me know the reasons why. If you don't, also let me know the reasons why. I hope you guys are enjoying what we're doing here on the channel. If you guys give me the heat for you guys, drop a comment, drop a like. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on all your notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.